and welcome to this episode of Journey Time where we learn all about people's journeys and take away some inspiration as well as motivation. Today we have a wonderful guest joining us. We have Fifi Deso, who is the president and founder of Alam Sahai Breast Cancer Foundation. Welcome to Journey Time. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you for doing this. Absolutely. And thank you for all the work that you're doing in the community. I mean, where to start? I got to see her in action firsthand and I have to say, she is just resilient, very giving in the community. Um, let's talk about that mission. Let's talk about that purpose behind the ABC Foundation, what we're standing in front of today. Tell me about that mission and the foundation. Thank you. Uh, I'm a type of breast cancer foundation is to honor my sister, my ex-sister who died of breast cancer. 2011, uh, so 2012, we uh, established the foundation. The main mission and purpose is to uh, reach out to women, to empower women about breast cancer, especially in our Ethiopian community, Eritrean community, mainly Ethiopian community here in the US and in Ethiopia. Um, we are very much a resource person uh, or resource foundation to find out about breast cancer, signs, symptoms, where to go once they're diagnosed with breast cancer and what to do. So. The foundation is uh, very much uh, educating and empowering Ethiopian women uh, to take care of their health or to be in charge of their own health. Yeah, and if you go on their website, which you'll see a link in the story, you'll see um, stats in there, you know, like one out of eight women are diagnosed. Um, and then you'll see other stats, more than 200,000 women a year. Um, you know, how prevalent is this? Because I feel like a lot of us don't really understand how big of a deal it is in the community or even you know in the country that's very true uh, breast cancer used to be uh, like old ladies disease mm -hmm. but not anymore now we have a lot of not necessarily Ethiopia, even throughout the world mm -hmm. young as young as 20 23 years old mm -hmm. girls diagnosed with breast cancer with all different types of breast cancer and in our community, of course, uh, there are lots of information out there, but not necessarily <clears throat> they will have access. And because of the access to information, because of language barrier, because of other issues that being a refugee trying to survive raise kids, mm -hmm. your first priority is feeding your kids and working two, three jobs, not examining your breast cancer, not getting information mm -hmm. that's out there about breast cancer. So the foundation is trying to fill in that gap, trying to be a bridge uh, for our community and the, uh, the American society, trying to get the information linked to our women so they can protect ourselves. Of course, you, you cannot prevent it really just like other diseases, but at least we educating women to do breast self-exam annually and every month according to their age, according to their risk, so they can dictate it early and get cured. Absolutely. And, you know, I know your sister, you know, you did say she she was lost to breast cancer, but she's still here living through this foundation. And um, you have this beautiful story um, on the website. Can you tell us a little bit about your sister and how she continues to live through you and through the foundation? Well, my sister, she's yet two years younger than I am. Uh, that's a sister that I have grown known very well in the family. I lived Ethiopia when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So she was really the only one that I would say know me very well and know her. So when she told me about her diagnosis, it was very devastated. I was I was really hurt. I didn't know where to go. So I was through her illness I was able to know really my country, Ethiopia, the women who are suffering with this disease. Mm -hmm the limited resource they have back there. Uh, I would say if she was in, Ethiopia, in America, I think that stage two left breast cancer would have been cured, would have been you know, that hard to treat. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she was there at that time. They didn't have much of what they have right now, much of the treatment, the diagnostic instruments, all that available to them. So, She's gone, of course, uh, physically, uh, she's not with us, but through this foundation, like you said, we were able to reach out lots of Ethiopian women 
educate them and help them out financially as well mm -hmm. to get the better treatment that my sister did at that time. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that. And it, the work that they do is tremendous. I'm telling you, I've seen it. And just, it, it's so, so, so important. You know, like, how do you find the strength, you know, to keep it going, to be there? Um, where, does, where does that strength come from for you? Well, I'm an Ethiopian woman. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Uh, my heritage mm -hmm. uh, from our mother. Our grandmothers who survived so many uh, really life-threatening things and they survived to raise us, they survived to be strong. Uh, for me, um, like I said, I lived home when I was younger, so I very much did everything on my own. But with this foundation though, uh, because I have seen through my sister's illness for the last well, well, during her illness for the three years during that period, I have seen a lot of women suffering, mm -hmm. not even having a bra, simple bra that we get here with less than ten dollars after they have mustard to me. Mm -hmm. Not having uh, a nausea medicine when they're getting chemo. Mm -hmm. So now with this foundation, be able to help them financially mm -hmm. uh, to get what they couldn't get back home. That gave me strength. Mm -hmm. That really gave me strength to continue doing what we're doing. By the way, I'm not the only one uh, doing this. Mm -hmm. We have wonderful, wonderful uh, committee members, directors, mm -hmm. who have big heart, who are out there, not give about us to the business people to ask to donate money so we can support the people back home and here too. And yourself, oh. you took your time to get <laughs> here to spread the news. Yeah. Yes. Well, we appreciate you and everything everyone that is a part of this foundation is doing. And speaking of, um, you all are expanding, right? You are yes. moving, now they're opening up a pink house in yes. Ethiopia. So tell yes. us a little bit about that. Well, our first mission was to educate and empower women and disseminate information about cancer or breast cancer. But the second one was to open a pink house uh, in Ethiopia. Of course, here everybody has a place to stay when they get chemo. Even if they don't have anybody else to stay, they have a shelter. Just like every other woman who don't have, who are homeless, there's a shelter place they can stay back home. We found out when they asked us to send them money for treatment, just to give you a little background, and most of our patients, when they call us, they all say they were just told that they have breast cancer, but they have to wait for six to eight months to get treatment because of all the waiting list is so long. Mm -hmm. So we jumped and sent them money to start treatment in private clinic. Mm -hmm. That's what we used to do. But what we found out later on was while they are getting chemo, those people who cannot afford it for treatment mm -hmm. Can't, don't have a place to stay in Addis where they have chemo, uh, I mean referral hospitals or private hospitals who give them the treatment. But they don't have a place to stay in Addis uh, It's very expensive to, for the hotel or to rent a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So the pink house purpose is to uh, give temporary shelter. We call it pink house because pink represents uh, breast cancer. So we found uh, a big house, uh, it's about nine bedroom. It's a big house with, uh, with girl, um, painted pink. It's a mezcal flower for those of you who would like to go and see, which is not far from uh, those doctors who get chemo. So the idea is trying to get a center place so we don't have to travel the patient that far. So we have a little criteria as who is going to be uh, staying in that temporary place. Uh, people who are out of, uh, who, who lives in out of uh, Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. It can be from any Kaflada or province, what have you, but not living in Addis. People who don't have money, uh, they have to have breast or cervical cancer. We added cervical because cervical is really a big issue in Ethiopia as well. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to help our other women as well who don't have a place you know, uh, to stay. So now it's for birth and cervical cancer. Uh, we will be providing transportation, food and shelter basically. 
we have a nurse uh, who will be educating them about healthy living, about their medication chemotherapy, and about further, you know, to prevent cancer from coming back. There are so many things they can do, healthy lifestyle. Of course, it's gonna be whatever we teach them, it's not gonna be like what we do, what we say here. It's gonna be tailoring to what they live, because everything what we say here, prevention is not a big deal in back home prevention, because that's more like survival lifestyle we have. But at least while they are in that pink home, we're gonna be educating them about medication, nutrition, and we will bring counselors to counsel them as well. So that is only while they are getting chemotherapy. Once they finish their chemotherapy, that batch of women will be living and will accept another one. Mm -hmm. So it's like nine bedroom, nine uh, women at a time that will be taken. We will have someone to cook for them. We'll have someone to clean the house. We will get transportation person who can uh, make a contract for us so that they can take them from the pink house to the hospital, whichever hospital they get in treatment. So basically, that's what we do and we're excited. Mm -hmm. I hope people who listen to this will be excited enough to come out there and help us. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to grow, we would like to uh, keep more than eight people or nine people at a time. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in Ethiopia about three months ago, I was able to uh, to uh, where the cancer center is, uh, I talked to the nurses, and it's heartbreaking the stories they tell you. So this is, it's not that many people will be helping, but even if it's one person, that's a great deal for us. It's a huge difference. Yes, I mean, that's a big yes. deal. So yes. that's yes. amazing. So yes. thank you for that. You know, if you are in Addis Ababa, like she said, yeah. go visit the Pink House yes. and, you know, get involved and help out yes. because, you know, it, it, it's happening right because of the community support and yes. the work that they're doing. So definitely check that out. That's amazing. And, you know, I know you, you said why you initially started, you know, getting involved and like really, really creating this foundation um, after your sister or in honor of your sister. But then you recently experienced your own um, battle with, with your breasts and um, preventing what could have been, right? Can you talk a little bit about what you just went through personally? Yes, it's very amazing. When my sister diagnosed, we never had cancer. My mom and dad died at the young age with the accident or war, something else, but not any types of health uh, illness. Mm -hmm. So we, we weren't sure what happened. Mm -hmm. So we didn't pay attention to it. Of course, we want her to cure, so take care of her five kids. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, she's gone. So I didn't realize we have that in the family and we have hereditary cancer. Of course, uh, um, being an uh, oncology nurse, uh, being out in the community, uh, doing all this for the last <coughs> five years gave me a chance to do whatever I teach, whatever I say to others, I have to practice it on me. Mm -hmm. So I do my monthly uh, uh, breast exam. It was not anything that I can palpate, I can feel. Uh, I do mammogram every six months. Uh, I think for the last three years, then later on they changed it as of two years ago every year because of my risk. Mm -hmm. So April 2017, I went for my annual mammogram. Um, it was abnormal. Uh, of course, I was busy in clinic where I work. So I postponed it to May and June for follow-up. Mm -hmm. That was the mistake that I have done. I want people to learn from my error, from my mistake. Nothing is more than or better than your own life. You need to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever you preach, you need to practice it on your own. So I didn't. I ignored it for two months because of uh, busy work. By the time I went for ultrasound, uh, it was stage two. I'm sorry, stage one. It was one centimeter. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it was not involved in my lymph node, and that was really a good thing. So I had a stage one left breast cancer. Finally found out uh, it was hereditary. So I had to do a double or bilateral mastectomy. What you see now is not my real breast. This is uh, <laughs> yeah, a little, little extra yeah. cushion there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Things. So, wow. but I didn't have to 
take chemotherapy, I don't have to take radiation, I'm just taking a, a hormonal therapy which is uh, uh, positive, mm -hmm. uh, which we can talk maybe some other time sure. because there are so many different, different breast cancer, mm -hmm. different types of treatment, mm -hmm. different types of stage, so it's kind of complicated yeah. to discuss about it mm -hmm. now. But that's what we do in, in the conference when we educate the community. We go in detail of each types of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So for now, mine found to be hereditary, but I was lucky enough that has been so good to me. I didn't have to take all this. Uh, I had the surgery, and I have also had to deal with my ovary because breast cancer in ovary. I'm saying this to say that other women mm -hmm. will benefit from the information. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have hereditary breast cancer, you are prone to your cancer, ovarian cancer, uh, liver cancer, uh, lung cancer, and prostate for men. So because of that, I have to find a way to reduce my risk from getting uh, another cancer or any part of my body, which is for me this ovary. So I had it in my, removed my ovary as well. By doing that, you have a 50% reduction of uh, your risk catching the cancer again. So it was not easy for me, although I have the community, the church members, wonderful, wonderful church members, uh, community, the friends and family, who very supportive, and my great co-workers, very supportive of me, supportive of the diagnosis, mm -hmm. all the prayers. Thank mm -hmm. uh, God. I'm good, I feel good, I feel that I, I'm healed. Yeah. Of course, the cancer is gone. Wow. And continue the work. Well, yeah. we are glad you're here and, and you're okay. And maybe, yes. you know, um, because you have such a powerful story, you've seen it on both ends. You've, you know, lost a loved one battling cancer, and you yourself have yes. battled cancer. So, yeah. to anyone watching, um, what can you say maybe to a family um, that is mourning the loss of, of someone and then what can you say to someone who is like yourself fighting um, to beat it? Okay. Do you see it says never never give up? Yes. We should not give up. Keep fighting. Fighting for the cure. We're going to stop the fighting when we have cure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we're going to continue fighting. Mm -hmm. We have to be ambassador of our health. For those women out there, uh, for Ethiopians, for mothers, uh, please, please take care of yourself. Your kids want you, the community wants you. So please take care of yourself. Please listen to the doctor's um, instruction, advice, and everything else. You can, everything else can help you, just use it. We have lots of resources, especially in the, in the US. We have lots of resources use it and apply it to yourself you need to take care of yourself it's not easy journey uh, although i didn't get chemo being uh, a nurse who administered chemo for 28 years i know what women go through i know how my sister went through uh, the side effect of the chemotherapy the radiation the emotional uh, trauma this in this tolerance especially for those mothers who have kids the kids need to know what's going on with their son. Especially our Ethiopian family love to hide everything from their family, from the kids, because they don't want to traumatize. But kids are smart, very smart. They know what's going on with their mom. When she's not smiling, when her hair is gone, trying to hide, and they know what you go through. So it's okay to tell them, because you need all that support. We have seen in our community, I talk a lot about Ethiopia, it's so funny, <laughs> because that's where my sister <laughs> lived and died. Um, we have even worse cases of breast cancer, cervical cancer, all different types of cancer here in, here in the US, where we have all that access for treatment. We have all access to go and do mammogram, free mammogram, free clinics for all of you, please, who would like. Uh, to get a free mammogram, let me know. Later on, Hannah will give out the address, our new office address, Memorial Drive, and our phone number. I can give you all the resources, the information you can use. You don't have to die, you don't have to suffer, you don't have to wait until it gets stage four, when you can catch it early, 
stage one or less. Uh, for also those Ethiopians, mother, it's okay to tell your neighbors, it's okay to tell us. Those people who tell us, we have to keep up, keep their kids, I mean, uh, pick up their kids from school, we do groceries, we do cleaning house, uh, we do everything to support the woman. So please, involve in, you know, helping others, and if you know somebody who really need help, help us to help them. That's all I can say. Amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. Now, we do have an event coming up on March 30th. Yes. So if you are in Atlanta, this is an event you want to be at. Yes, the fourth annual Pink Dinner. It's going to be a very, very special evening. And why don't you tell them a little bit about it, and then we'll kind of wrap up from there. So make sure to come. Thank you, thank you, Anna. I almost forgot. Uh, with all the, I was talking about education. Mm -hmm. So twice a year we have a conference mm -hmm. in October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. So we have conference, we bring all different doctors, nurses, nutritionists, counselors, mm -hmm. social workers, invite them from all over the United States. They come and talk about the different topics, not only breast cancer, not only cervical cancer, we talk about everything, whatever is affecting our community, Ethiopian community. Mm -hmm. So our October conference is a big conference. Mm -hmm. uh, the pink dinner, mm -hmm. of course we say pink, pink is breast <laughs> awareness mm -hmm. color. Uh, we chose March, uh, and we said, this is not October, why dinner in March? Mm -hmm. How we started off, uh, because we, we try to empower our women, our mothers and sisters, mm -hmm. to take care of themselves, to empower, to, you know, to uh, educate them about not only breast cancer, about health in general, mm -hmm. taking care of their body, listen to their body, mm -hmm. knowing their body. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, March is uh, Women's International Women's yeah. Day. So let's just do it. Yeah. So awesome. we did the first, the first year, we did it, I think it was March 9 or March 8. That's how we started having it in March. That's awesome. Yeah, That's so awesome. this is all about a woman. All right. So, yeah, all about a woman. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Our pink dinner last year was uh, Alan Tahai Wadajo. We came and we, we loved her. Oh, I love her. Uh, she's yeah, amazing. She's an amazing love woman. You. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. she was here. This year, our lovely leader, <laughs> our lovely young yeah. lady, who does so it. much in our community, <laughs> yeah. Ethiopian and Eritrea, and she you. introduced our culture in Chicago, when you, especially when you graduate. Yeah. We all were so proud of you. Talk about your heritage, yeah. your culture, our culture, everything. So it's very hard to find a young woman who was born and grew up here to talk about our country. It's so proud. Awesome. So you are really good. So you. You, you are the our <laughs> guest speaker. I am so We're excited. Waiting, oh. waiting for you for I'm that pumped. day. I'm so, pumped. It's yes. truly an honor. You all have paved the way for us. Like you said, yeah. you know, never, never, never yeah. give up. And you all didn't yes. give up. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So we're so, so, so grateful. Thank you for your message today. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, we're going to wrap this up, but if you want to learn more about this, it's really simple. You can go to www.abcfonline.org. There's going to be a link at the bottom of this story. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We hope you appreciated that. We love you. We appreciate you. Keep going. Keep on going. Never give up. Never give up. So we thank you for watching. Make sure to tune in next time. From now and forward, we wish you a wonderful day and sending much love to you wherever you're watching this from in the world. Ciao. Ciao. Bye.